And welcome to the SpartanMag.com VCast. Jim Comperoni, Paul Conerdike, Breslin Center for the last time this year. Michigan State 84-78 over Ohio State. Michigan State finishes the regular season 19-11. 11-8 overall in the Big Ten. Uh, would have been 12-8 in the Big Ten if they played Minnesota, most likely. Uh, ends up, uh, you know, as this game finishes, Michigan State's in like a seven-way tie for second place. Other teams will move a half game ahead of them because Michigan State didn't play the extra game. Michigan State jumped out 17-4. to Ohio State came back, made it competitive a number of number of areas, a number of stages. But Michigan State just kind of kept them at arm's length most of the game, finished it out. Uh, Michigan State still very hot on offense. Um, I was getting ready to really, you know, think this team was really gaining traction in the first five or seven minutes. I thought it was going to be one of those days. Credit to Ohio State for battling. They've had a tough year, but they they just kept com competing as competitors. And Michigan State showed slippage on defense. Uh, a problem they've had the last couple of weeks, so I'll stay short of any hyperbole in terms of this team being ready to make a run. They still have that potential, no doubt, but not there yet. They've got work to do, but a lot of steps forward offensively today. I'm not going to, I mean, I'm not going to predict a, a run or anything like that. I think they'd be, they'd be careless, but I will say that the defense isn't as bad as it looked today at times, and, and I'll tell you why. Um, I really feel like this Ohio State team, it, they, they ran their stuff way better than they did in, in Columbus. And, you know, I was talking to Jaden Akins about that. And he said the one thing that they, they didn't do when they were in Columbus, which is counterintuitive because they're in their home floor, he said the spacing that they had was terrible, uh, you know, when the, when uh, Michigan State played in Columbus. And he felt like because their spacing was so bad that they couldn't get the dribble penetration that they wanted when they played in the first time. He said this, this, uh, this game was a lot different. The spacing was really good. He says they were able to put – you know, guys like Tyson Walker and, and ball screens, and, and they couldn't get Michigan State couldn't get the help defenders there uh, on some of those guys that they did in the, in the first meeting. So I think that was that was a little bit eye opening talking to Aikens about that. And, and I'll say this: one of the things that I've been impressed with Chris Holtman, wherever he's coached, uh, you know, before this year, is some of the spacing that they do on, on offense and the way they're able to dribble penetrate. Uh, you know. Michigan State had problems stopping the dribble penetration, and uh, again, the defense isn't what it needs to be. But I firmly believe, I, I do believe that they can get it back. I, I agree with Tom Izzo, and, and I think it'll help once they get out of conference for it. Yeah, uh, it needs to, and they've done it before earlier this year. You know, I was talking to Izzo a little bit after his press conference, and he was talking about Ohio State and the way they go small and some of the matchup problems that that can present. Now, Michigan State theoretically should be able to go small and match it up, but he complained again, Izzo did, about Malik Hall hurting his back and not being able to move laterally like they would like him to. So that part of Michigan State's defensive ability to go small to match up with a team like this ended up being a loose wheel that Izzo didn't anticipate. So Michigan State was kind of chasing their, their tail on that most of the day, and Ohio State made some three-pointers. So. so what you'd like in that situation is you'd like a guy like Pierre Brooks yeah. You know, to be able to come off the bench and give you defensive minutes. You know, we've no seen question. A, few, a few guys over the years where they have a, a role to play. Uh, you know, I think of like Kyle Arns, like early in his career. Um, you know, maybe even, I don't I don't know if a guy like Alvin Ellis ever play, played the four, but there are some guys that you can kind of suit up for an undersized four-man position, and, and given what Garrett Brooks' body type is like, mm -hmm. he's kind of, he would be, if he was in the defense, would be built, you know, for, for a, a role like this. And... Uh, but again, I think Michigan State did some, they did some good things on, on defense. I would say it's less the defense than the defensive rebounding. You know, because I feel like a lot of times, a lot of times like when Michigan State did go small in this, uh, you know, and I, feel, I still feel like Joe, Joey Hauser needs to get a little bit more rest because he's not quite. Yeah, we have 36 minutes today. Yeah, That's a lot. Hey, listen, he's not, what, he's not it, it, what he was for most of the year as a rebounder, um, you mm -hmm. know, because the fatigue is, is taking a toll. And they need him to score in the half court, and he's doing a lot of, a lot of work. I, I saw Malik Hall, you know, like you talk about him and his back. I saw him miss a critical cutout late in the game. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Ohio State misses a three. It could have been really costly. But, but I, I, I again go back to, it, like, defensive rebounding. There's a lot of deflections out of bounds uh, in this game. There was a lot of, there's a lot of like second chance opportunities, you know, for Ohio State where maybe there wasn't a ton of offensive rebounds by the Buckeyes, but it felt like a lot of their buckets in the second half came after uh, Michigan State wasn't able to get uh, Corella defensive rebound. Mm -hmm. Those second chance opportunities hurt Michigan State, and they helped help Ohio State in this game. Mm -hmm. And uh, AJ Hogard, nice stat line. 
Uh, Izzo was really pleased with him in a number of ways. You know, the alley oop jam a couple times. You know, his alley oop passing's not been that great this year, as you've noted. I Izzo's. Don't know if that one was that great. I mean, I, I, like, the first one or the second one? The, the, fir or the first one was the one to Malik Hall, correct? Or, All right, Malik Hall. Then another one to Sissoko one later. Sissoko, man, that was way high. I mean, that was really high. And, and, you know, I know people are critical of, you know, Madi's hands and whatnot. But that's a it was up there, huh? That was a credit for Madi to go up and get it. And, you know, but, again, that one's easier for a guy that has superior leaping ability to go up and get than it is for him to get it on the way down and then jam it. So... Um, you know, those are those are good those are good things. And uh, I think I thought when I did my three and I just a minute ago, I felt like Hogarth played one of his best games of the yeah. year. Um, I, I knew going into this game that Michigan State wouldn't get the easy scoring looks like for a guy like Tyson Walker. He wouldn't get open shots like he got against Nebraska, and they would have to work for a lot of what they got in the half court. Well, AJ Hogarth was a guy that was open. He took good shots while still trying to run his team. Yeah. This, is a, this is an example of the balance that he needs to have as, as a facilitator, still leads the team with seven assists, but also efficiently as a scorer. He's not hunting shots in this game, but he's taking good shots when they present themselves. Um, and, and I really thought that he showed some maturity in this game as a, as a, you know, as a point guard. Last two games, he's had 21 assists, two turnovers. Um, hit, when he makes the decision to use that ball screen and get downhill, he's got deceptive quickness to go with that size and that strength. And, and good ball handling at the rim. Um, you know, a couple times Michigan State ran some ball screen. They, they always run ball screen stuff. But sometimes he uses it to, to, to run the play. Other times he's taking it to the rim. You're not seeing him take it to the rim and get in jail. Right. You know, when he goes to the rim, there's, he's doing it for a good reason because he, he's making a good read and seeing daylight. That part of A.J. Hogard's game as the quarterback of this offense is getting better and better, as it should for a junior. Yeah, going back to the quarterback analogy, I'd call that as a pocket awareness. You know, like when a quarterback in football, you know, has the ability to see what's there and scramble. I, I think AJ Hogard early in the season, you see a lot of you see a lot of stuff coming to the basket, but you'd see him doing that in uh, in a lot of circumstances where it, it didn't warrant it. I think he's picking his spots. You know, you're seeing like a couple of those type of buckets late in the first half when guys are starting to wear down. You're seeing it in the second half. Uh, you know, he's being judicious about it, but he's also doing it at a time where. Uh, you know, where guys aren't fresh and, and they're maybe a step slow. And, uh, and I really, you know, I really think you did a great job with that today. I think Michigan State in the last three games is from three point range is up around 60%. I, I did, I, I put the put that figure in the story and did the math earlier, but I didn't bring my paper with me. But it, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's getting into like, you know, no one in the country is talking about Michigan State. You know, they're talking about Arkansas a little bit as like a team under the, the you know, outside of the top 25 who's dangerous or some of these teams. Early. And they had a good – People liked them early. People, you know? They liked them early, and they had a good year last year. Um, but Michigan State, for what they've been in the NCAA tournament in the last 25 years, not getting much attention, and that's fine with Michigan State. I mean, they've got a ways to go on, de on defense. The record is not spectacular. But when you, when you sit there and look at it, the number of quad, four, quad one wins that they have – and the coach that they have, and the experience that they have, and now you add that three-point shooting, which arguably is the best three-point shooting team in the country. Yeah. It's it's number one. I mean, Xavier's good, but among among um, you know Power Five conferences, the number one in the country. And Hauser goes out, and he's three for three again. He's I mean, he's over sixty percent, I think, from three-point range the last four or five games. And of course, you know Walker and Akins is is good shooting. And Malik Hall be coming off the bench again. He gives you something uh, after this game. He started today because it's Senior Day. These are shooters, Paul. Uh, is it is those best shooting team? I think it is. It's one of them. Um, you'd have to start with the fact that they've got a stretch four, and you'd have to go back and look at a stretch four shooting teams and look to see what they had at the wings. This team doesn't have as good a shooter at the point, but today AJ, AJ hit a couple of them. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look at it. I mean, he, there's not, there haven't been many times where Michigan State's had three guys um, that are shooting well over 40% from, from, no. from three, and, and these guys are doing it in conference competition. You know, a lot of times when we look at 40% three-point shooters, these guys have put up and get a lot of good shots early in the season. And they put up really big, and they're up over 50% going into Big Ten play. And then they kind of, kind of ease down, ease down, ease down, and uh, you know sometimes dip under. In the case of like a guy like Cassius Winston, I, I feel like with Michigan State, these guys are building up and build, building up. And I, and I think the reason for that is um, that these guys, like when you think of Jaden Akins and Malik Hall, um, these guys are getting used to playing with each other again. There's been so many like different lineups and stuff like that with the injuries and then the re-injuries. But now that these guys have played uh, you know, a sustained number of games in a row together. And, and I think that's why Michigan State is kind of flying under the radar. That's why they're getting, they're getting better. 
and we can talk about the defense needs to be better. I'll still take Michigan State's defense over a lot of other defenses I see out there. And Michigan State's three-point defense is still is still very good. I, I don't think they I don't think they need to be much better. I think they need to be I need to think they need to get back to rebounding better. And I think uh, I think they will do that. Um, you know, as they get a little bit of rest prior to the Big Ten tournament, and I think they'll be able to flip the switch. I, I like these guys. I like where they're at mentally. I like the kind of guys they are. Um, you can just tell, like, you can kind of tell, like, during the senior day ceremonies, you got underclassmen that, that are happy for these guys. You got guys in the locker room afterwards, where you have seniors that are in there with their families and they're having a good time with the younger players forcing around. It's it's a tight, connected team. Um, I, I don't think people pay enough attention to those kind of things. And, and I really feel. I see a lot of similarities between this one and the 2015 team. It took a lot of people by surprise, you know. But at the same time, I like this team better than that 2015 team. You know, that Brent Forbes and Denzel Valentine and those guys as juniors, they're really good. They got hot at the end of the year. Um, but this team has got a lot of different, different things. And watch out for them. I'm not saying that they're going to do it, but. Nothing would shock me because when Izzo has a stretch four, when Izzo has a point guard, when Izzo has a shooting guard that can create like Tyson Walker is. I mean, we saw it again today. How many games in a row do we have to see Tyson Walker make some really tough shots mm. at the end of a shot clock or when they need a bucket? Um, you know, and it wasn't just jumper today. He had a couple tough shots going mm. to the rim. And, and key moments too. Yeah, and those weren't easy. And, and you know Man. what? These guys have done this. These guys, have, a lot of these guys, Fogart has done a lot of this stuff all season long. Tyson Walker. He hasn't done it to the extent that he's doing it right now, but he's done this stuff all season long. And, uh, you know, Joey Hauser has just gotten super consistent and confident. And, you know, now I was going to write this with it. You know, I had to do a three and out instead of a four and out. One of the things I liked about Malik Hall in the first half is I felt like this is the best job he's done in a half of playing within the construct of, yeah. the, of the offense. Yeah. Four of eight or whatever it was, 10 points. Mm -hmm. He had rhythm threes. Mm -hmm. He took the stupid fadeaway thing in the lane. That didn't one work. of them, one of them. One of them, but then he bounced back next time and he and he took it like a step a step back, but it was a face-up jumper and I'm totally okay with that. I, I'll give him that shot all day long. And I, I thought if this version of Malik Hall, you know, can carry over and you're and seeing more of that, shooting. more and more of that. You're Absolutely. seeing more glimpses he's of that. Fighting it too. You can see him fighting it, but he's doing a good job with it. And, the, and these guys are doing a better job playing good basketball. You know, Hogarth getting the ball not just to the right shooters, but in the right spot to shoot. And some of the some of the skip passing has been really, really yeah. ridiculous. Like you don't expect a guy to make a perfect pass over defense all the way across the court. Uh, and they've gone to that more because defenses are are getting wise to you know screen roll replace. They're getting out on the replace, so they go screen roll skip. You know they, they know the defense is going out of the replace guy. They, you know they did that against Iowa. Did they against Nebraska? That and as they've done it for other games, it carries over to games afterward. And it, it's a skillful the, outfit. The problem with that skip pass is a lot of times. It, drags guys away from where they need to shoot you know like it's usually I mean that's a you got to put a lot of zip on it and sometimes you know you see a lot of guys are trying to get that skip pass uh, from a long ways away and they end up they end up like you know going way too far in the corner or something like that the, the precision passing so you said is this Michigan State's best shooting team I would say you know well I'll answer that after after the after the season yeah I would say that these guys are the best group of passers right now collectively that I've seen in terms of you know outside the center position, but I'm talking about like guards, you know, Hauser has been a really underrated passer. Hall is a good passer. All three of the backcourt are good passers. And, uh, you know, even early in the game, Tyson Walker wasn't getting a lot of his shots, but he was creating for other people almost as a point guard while he's playing the two. That was impressive to me. Right. I mean, Walker, I mean, that's an experienced senior. Gives him all kinds of things. Gave him a big defensive play, uh, you know, with about, 10, about six minutes to go after Ohio State. Uh, made a run back at them. Um, you know, Michigan State with the defense, you know, Izzo's going to be harping on it, and he's a proven defensive leader. He's going to know what needs to be tightened up, and these guys are mindful enough. I don't see any casual personalities on this team. They'll want to get that part of it squared away also. And, you know, if, once they get into the NCAA tournament, they start out preparing teams on those one-day preps. If they can get into the second, you know, get win the first game, get to the second game, that's where, the Izzo, where Izzo can have that that effect on the defense going forward. Big Ten tournament coming up. You're going to be down there. Um, we have to wait and see what the what the matchups are and so forth. But this Michigan State team, if, if they get that by, uh, that can help them. And I think they're dangerous the way they're shooting. You know, we talked about Hauser also with the with the. He has gotten better as 
Aikens and Hall have gotten acclimated. You mentioned earlier about Aikens and Hall getting acclimated back into the into the lineup and everything. And I think Hauser's the guy that benefits from that the most. He's a guy the defenses might lose a little bit, whether it be trailing or or on flares and so forth. So I think those guys, and the more that Hall gets back, the better Hauser does. But what do you think about a Big Ten tournament? Yeah, I mean, going back to the, the Hauser thing, when Aikens is in that corner and he's a threat to, he's a threat to shoot, uh, you know, and you've got Hogarth is a threat to, to dribble. Tyson Walker is almost like takes a multiple guy approach right, right now. You're not seeing guys come down. If Joey Hauser wants to drop down in that lane. Uh, you know, you're not seeing him. You're not seeing two guys dig at it. You know, you might see. Yeah. Him, you know, and that, that that's a handful for a defense. And he made a big. He made a big back to the basket. Um, you know. And they and they went late, late in the game. And, and they was, they went to it after a timeout. Went straight to him in the post. Little jump hook type of thing. We saw that from him early on in his career. Michigan State really didn't have a post player, and he wasn't hitting threes. He was able to use that element of his game. But the nuance thing, the nuance portion of Joey Hauser's game is what kind of impresses me. He can do it in a lot of different ways. If you're taking away the three-point line from him, he can contribute in other ways. But the, the passing is the one thing that I think is really kind of under underappreciated. I know Izzo earlier in Hauser's career overhyped his passing ability, and you know I didn't see it. But the way he's passing now is uh, similar to what, you know, that's what I, I, maybe, you know, that was wishful thinking by Izzo saying he's a great passer. Yeah, but, but Izzo good, says things. He is a good passer right Good now, passer. And that, that's a good thing. Big Ten tournament. Well, wait, hold on. With Hauser, with the way he, the way they went to him after that timeout, the next possession went to him again, and he drew a foul, one at the free throw line. I think he hit one out of two. But going to him, that's what they did at the Michigan game. They came out of a timeout about three or four minutes ago, went to him in the post. It didn't work out well. I mean, Michigan had all that size, and they hadn't posted him up the entire game, and they went to him in a key situation there in the Michigan game. Didn't work. This game it did. He was guarded by six foot six, uh, Sensabaugh or, or suing one of those guys. Sense, suing, I think. So, so there was less uh, there was less size in there. It made more sense to go to him down low tonight. It's it's a card you can play if the other team, depending on what their matchups are. So Hauser came through on that one. If they're facing another Twin Tower team like Michigan, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend that doing like they did in the Michigan game, going down to Hauser down low one or two times in a row. But uh, they've got that card to play depending on matchups. One of the things I would say about the small lineup, we've seen them go a lot, lots of that, and today it made, made sense. It made sense a lot of, at, at Nebraska at times, but I do feel like the more they go to that, the more minutes they play with uh, Hauser and Hall at the, at, the, at the four and the five, the more winners, I mean, let, let's face it, if you're an undersized big, that's a lot of wear and tear on your body. It's, it's late, late in the season. The more minutes they play small, I, I do think that I do think there's diminishing returns on rebounding. Um, I, you know, but late in the game today, uh, Suing, who's not a great rebounder, but he beat both Hall and Hauser for a couple of rebounds, and uh, you know, so I would, I, I still think that Michigan State's got to try to manage Joey Hauser's minutes, and his versatility makes it so hard for him to, you know, to, to keep him on, off the floor. The Big Ten tournament, you know, going back to the, dip, how do you how do you get back to playing the defense that, that Michigan State was playing? Well, Aikens was playing more minutes, you know, and Aikens is, you know, is a better defensive player in terms of just shutting the, you know, shutting the, um, shutting the hose off at the faucet, like way out on the perimeter, and. Uh, and Hall is still kind of a. Uh, an X factor as a, as a defensive player at the three today a couple times with the back injuries and everything a little bit slower got taken off the dribble and Izzo was mad and went to the bench with Aikens and put him in there for Hall you can tell by Izzo's body language when he's mad at someone's defense he's mad at Hall which we haven't seen over the years but again you know at the very beginning of the year we talked about Hall can he play defense on a three and his season has been interrupted so much and he's been playing hurt I'm not sure we still know the answer on that I think he can on a three I think he can I, on some threes if, if Jaden Aikens is your three, uh, a guy like that, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Um, unless, you know, unless that's a dude that you're playing that does not shoot well and you want to shoot and you can kind of back up and use your length, you know, unless it's like a driving type guy, I, I think he can play some. I thought he did a nice job. I thought Hall in that initial ten minutes, you know, his yeah. first shift he did really well. Yes. In Okay. Uh, you know, Suing tried to drive him a couple times, and, and he did a really nice job of keeping attached to Suing, um, well, you know, well not following and uh, and using his lower body, staying vertical with his arms up. I thought he did a nice job. I thought Joey Hauser did a nice job early in the game. 
I think Hall can play defense, but there are some guys, you know, against some teams, against really small teams, teams that have like a basically a four guard type of deal, like some of those like uh, mid-major freaky teams. Uh, I don't think he can play play the three. And then you're getting to get a, a situation where we talked about this in SpartanMag.com Spartan live the other night. Um, I really think that it becomes a matchup thing and you have to be honest with yourself and, and it's not like okay Hall gets this many minutes because he's Malik Hall. If, it, if the matchup favors Jaden Aikens playing 32 minutes or 33 minutes and Hall playing maybe 15 or whatever then that's the that's the way you have to go because you don't want to cheat yourself in the postseason. There are matchup issues. Sure. Now um, senior day today Tyson Walker comes out, he, he cracked a smile when the crowd chanted one more year, one more year. They did for Hall also. I thought both of those players received it well. I thought their families did as well. Even Izzo got on the microphone and implored it and said, let's do it one more year, one more time. Then he says he loves the guys and whatever decision they make, they'll support it. But they, he wanted those two players to know that there's 15,000 fans that wanted those guys to come back. What was your read on that whole thing? I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, like, I, I, think, I think really, you know, like, there's so little depth in today's in today's game and there's so little experienced talent it's not like what it used to be you know like ohio state had a, a great recruiting class they have really good players really good freshman players bruce thornton is a beast i really like that dude bryce sensible is, is is awesome he's going to be great you know I, I feel like on a different team he would have been big 10 freshman in the year that opara guy uh he's got some length and some athleticism and I got to say this, Chris Holtman don't know how to use a big man, a real big man. You know, he does well with his little undersized tweener guys, but usually not not the long guys. But Ohio State, my point is, is Ohio State has got a lot of good freshmen on this team. They struggle. And, uh, you know, and the teams with experience, uh, you know, the game has gotten to the point with NIL and whatnot. The teams with experience are the ones that, that are – most likely to win a, a, a championship. We'll learn more about it this, this March. Yeah. It, it's out there. You look at, you know, you're looking at, you know, I was watching this a second ago while I was working, they had like Texas a senior day in there. Marcus Carr, the mm. former dude from Minnesota. You know, like you got all these Big Ten guys from, all these experienced Big Ten guys from, uh, you know, that left during that COVID time and, and whatnot. And uh, I just think experience really, really helps. So you look at Joey Hauser this year, where he is like just mentally, in his mental space, um, you know, feeling good about himself, enjoying basketball. That's quite a bit different than some of these guys that are coming in. Um, you know, like let's say a McDonald's All-American that feels like, oh, i got to get this and this and this. So I can move on and go pro and get drafted. And not just that. It's like mentally, like, I've got to do this, this, and this because otherwise I'm not, you know, like, I'm not, my brain suffers. Uh, I'm not, I've got to show that I'm worthy of this. You know, I was recruited to replace this guy. Why is this guy playing in front of me? And, and I really think that college basketball is, uh, you know, the best teams are the ones that have have some core nucleus guys. I look at the guys that Michigan State has coming in next year. There's a heck of a lot of talent. Best recruiting class in, in, the, in the Big Ten. But you need experience in there. And, uh, and the young guys need older guys to take them along and, and show them the ropes. Uh, so I don't know if all of these guys are coming back. I don't know which ones are, are coming back. I thought it was interesting in the year, like early on, like the first practice, uh, I was informed that, um, you know, that Hauser had another year of eligibility. He, or he could he could apply for it. Yeah, so to hear that, like the first day of practice, it was kind of like, okay, so with NIL, the thing, the thing, like, I think Hauser went, because of the way he's changed his game, because of the way he's shown that he can defend and, uh, and rebound, his skill set, I think that he's the one that, would be the most likely, uh, and because of most the likely to what to have a chance to do like something professionally to move on. Yeah, and with his brother being successful. Yes, that, you know that that helps him. Out, yes, because you know, because his brother Sam paved the way, mm -hmm. and, and Joey's done a lot of great things with his body. And uh, you know, there's like times last year where you knew that he was going to have to be taken off the court just because the mm -hmm. matchup didn't favor. Mm -hmm. That's not the case this year. But you and know, his shooting, his shooting. I mean, that'll 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 make him attractive for a guy like Tyson Walker. You know. NBA just there's not a lot of you know like the point guard is it's, it's different it's different than college you know and, and Tyson Walker to me is, has become a great college basketball player and uh, what, what do you think he actually is six feet he's listed at six one how many people in the NBA are actually under six two man there's not many of them there's not many but I would say the one thing that he can do is I've seen like like before games or whatever during warm ups when he throws the ball off the off the backboard and dunks it two handed you know, but yeah, the just point is well, well taken. And he, it's not like he's got T-Rex arms. Right. He plays really good defense. But 
That's one of the things that really hurts your draft stock. More, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see guys like that make it as, a, as an undrafted free agent or something like that. And sometimes they stick. But uh, I think he's he, he's not one of those he's not one of those fake six foot. He's six foot. But you know, when everyone, else, excellent. When everyone else is six three, six four, six five at, at point guard, um, that's an issue. I think he can. You know, I think he can really, really. This, this is a, a point guard university. And I think he can really establish himself. Um, well, he's playing shooting guard now, but I think he can establish himself as, like, this is a guard university. He's done so many different good things. You know, to me, he's better than Travis Trice. I really believe that. You know, the, the, the defensive package, the, the shooting, I mean, the ability to score in different ways at the rim, mid-range game. He's got so many good things going for him. He's a plus defender. Um, you know, I've said for a long time, he reminds me of one of those old, old school UConn guards. And, uh, you know, he can be a great college basketball player. And, you know, and he can get paid next year. Yeah, exactly. Is he going to is he going to get paid more money by going to going to Europe, playing in the D League? No. Um, you know, it, it's just whether he wants. To, you know, some guys just are done with college; they want to move on. But, but if he if he, he see, I, just reading him, I think he he says he hasn't thought about it much, and I believe him. He's going to wait and see what happens in March and, and find out, you know, what what the NIL deals are around here, and you make a professional decision. And I don't think he hates it here. He's not a bull crapper either. I'll say that about Tyson Walker. Like I, you can tell, like he's. I really like him when someone asks him a really stupid question. Like when I ask him a stupid question. Well, when all of us ask him a stupid question. He'll let you know when you ask he a stupid gets question. A snarl on his face. You know, like, like if someone asks him, like, what, "Did you think you could make that shot?" Like, <laughs> what, you know, he's not going to take it if he doesn't think he can make it. So, but he's got an edge about. He's got an edge about him, and but I think he's having a good time. You know what he is? He, he's, an, he's an old, he's a 1974 New York City playground point guard, which we haven't seen in very often. Right. And they, you know, like guys like Vaccaro and those guys say that that doesn't exist anymore because the outdoor game doesn't exist anymore. They, they don't develop the numbers they used to. But his ability to stop, his ability to stop, drive, stop, and go up, I man, still, it's hard to guard. I still think there's a, the playground doesn't exist anymore, but the attitude and the, um, the want to, I love the fact that he gets upset when he doesn't do well on defense. You know, here's a guy that's leading the team in scoring, uh, has had multiple 30-point games, but he is – he takes defense personally. That's rare. The one thing I wanted to say about him before I forget, the thing that I enjoyed most about the senior day thing beyond what we saw on the court was in the locker room afterwards seeing uh, Tyson Walker's family, some of the family members in there, and his brother. And, uh, you know, maybe – I don't know if it's more, he has more than one brother in there. But he's got family members in there taking video of him being interviewed and getting a, getting a real kick out of it. And they all had smiles on their face. like, Because uh, we were standing around waiting for guys to get out of the shower. you got to wait till guys get dressed, obviously, before you can start interviewing them. And, uh, you know, the guys are just suit His brothers and his family are just sitting there talking with other teammates. And then when everyone swarmed Tyson Walker, they were like, whoa, what's this? You know, it's like it reminds me, and it, it kind of reminds me of, like, that – he appreciates where he came from, and, and I think his family appreciates where he's gotten, um, you know, to be the, the center of attention, but not because he didn't do anything, not because of his ranking, because he deserves it. But the guy absolutely balls out. Um, this is a place that he can be appreciated. And yeah. He's appreciated. I he's actually, earned it because there's a lot of people that didn't appreciate him because they didn't know who he was. He showed us who he is over time. His personality's come out. He's a heck of a college basketball player. And he scored a lot of points and made big moments, but he never, like, takes a bad shot. It's never like he's going hunting for his numbers or, you know, steps out. Of, it's it, it's out. And when he does do, try something difficult, it's because the situation is like, okay, down five, 38 seconds to go, they need some points. You know, it, yeah. and today he do, he's got to dig down. He, he has a positive characteristic which is a dig down characteristic today Ohio State made a run at them and that's when he made that double scoop layup which they should probably name an ice cream after him at quality dairy or, or uh, the dairy store some sort of Tyson Walker double scoop because that was a great shot and had to have it and then he goes back and and you can see on defense he just turns it up a wick where he's just a little more uh you know, reach a little bit more, a little more pesky on defense. Right. And he turned it up there and got a steal. Now, he's playing 33 minutes a game. I wouldn't expect him to play at that level for 33 minutes, but he can dig down and get it in in, in big situations, and that's a, that's an asset for this team. You know, he's the one guy that Izzo says he can, he can play a lot of minutes, and I think that's the mental toughness that he brings. Now, you can't play 36, 38 minutes and, uh, you know, and, and do what he does on both ends, ends of the floor. 
Um, but the mental toughness thing is, is there and, you know, the drive that want to. Um, she talked about being old school New York City point guard. I haven't seen too many guys use the glass the way he does at times. I mean, he go. I mean, he goes high glass. Like I, you never see that anymore. It's like, man, I, I, I want. Sometimes I'm going to ask him, like, where did that come from? Because you just don't see it. I mean, it's ridiculously high glass. Like mm -hmm. if your high school coach saw you do that. You, or sometimes a teardrop without glass. He'll do it either right. way. Yeah, so, I mean, excellent skill on that guy. And I asked him a dumb question. I was asking him about the senior day, you know, the, the, the everybody asked him about the, you know, one more year thing. He got a kick out of him. I'm like, well, you saw senior day last year. Were you looking forward to it? Did you have fun? What would you think of that? And he was like, well, what would you think of it? <laughs> I go, people, no one cares what I think. You're the dude. Yeah, you know, but. Um, that's good for us. To hear. <laughs> so, I think he's enjoying college basketball. And, uh, it's, you know, it, it's good that these players, you know, I, the NIL thing, there's some positives to it, a lot of positives to it. And he gets to make a choice as to whether he wants to stay here and get paid probably more than he would in the G League or more in Europe, you know, and, and work toward his master's while he plays another year of college basketball. Does it make him a better NBA prospect? Probably not. But if you can get money here, get it there, whatever, I'm not sure. But I, I, he, he feels he's getting better as a player as, uh, because he's in this program. He told that to Izzo a week or two ago. So he, he doesn't feel like he's, like, rotten on the vine or anything right now. He's, he's still getting better. Yeah, you know, and I'm not sure how, like, you know, some guys are better fits for going over to Europe and, and not. I mean, I don't know. Like, I mean, I, th I honestly think there would be some, a lot of culture shock for him over there. Like, he'd get acclimated to it, but he's a tough kid, and he's a good, he's a good mindful person. And So I don't know. I do know in terms of, I do know in terms of what Michigan State has coming in, one of the things that they lack is shooting, and uh, they've got some guys that can score. But in terms of like, in terms of guard that can get shots and create shots for himself, uh, that's really hard to find. You know, Jaden Aikens is going to be like, you know, he, assuming that whole guard's going to take a step. He's going to, you know, he, he took a big step this past year with his with his perimeter, uh, with his shooting. His shot looks a lot a lot better. There's no doubt about that. Um, you know, especially when he steps into it when it's you know inside out. He's going to be. A, much better. I don't ever, I don't look at him and say he's going to ever be a great shooter. You know, you know, maybe I, I, I kind of doubt it. Jaden Aikens, I mean, hey, he's going to get there. He shot 40 percent above 40 percent from three for two straight years. Okay, he's you know, he's going to be a good shooter. But you got to have more. You know, you got to have a, a couple guys, and, and there's a real need for for shooters on on this team. There's going to be a lot more athleticism coming in in some ways, but there's still a need for shooting and for skill, and they could really use Tyson Walker. And we've talked about Xavier Booker and the challenges he's going to have to make it, you know, to make that transition to the next level. I'm sure he's a guy or people around him that are going to think one and done, he'll be ready to go based on his ranking. But, uh, you know, he's got skill, shooting ability, ball handling ability, but he, he's got to learn to play harder. You know, obviously, he's, I don't – there's there's an adjective I can use. I don't want to put that on him, but he uh, – He's got to learn to play harder, and for if he were to come to college and start right away, that's not probably best for him. If Malik Hall were to come back and start in Joey Howard's position at the four, so that you know Aikens can start at the three, and he can bring Booker along, that might be best for Booker and the whole team to take a little pressure off of him, off of Booker. And uh, I think some of Booker's weaknesses can be worked on slowly, rather than than those becoming glaring weaknesses from the jump. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a the frame of reference you can look at is like. A First of all, like Jaron Jackson was more ready to come into, uh, you know, when he came to Michigan State as a freshman, he was more more ready for the the college game. But I do think like Jaron Jackson played a manageable manageable number of minutes. There's veteran guys around him. They wanted him to do well, and they wanted to him to succeed. I, I feel like I honestly believe that Xavier Booker's best chance at being successful as a college player is to be surrounded with people that can help him learn the ropes and, and want him to succeed and bring him along. Uh, I don't look at him as a guy that can have success if he's dropped into a situation and all of a sudden face all kinds of adversity. There's some kids that can do that. Um, you know, I know he, he, you know, the want to is there, but there's a whole lot of pressure at this university. It doesn't matter at any university, but uh, Power Five college where fans look around and see banners up in the rafters every game, there's an immense amount of, amount of pressure. In terms of the things you need to do away from the ball and without the ball in your hands, right. he doesn't know what he doesn't know yet. So I mean, he was, it's going to take a minute. In last time this, you know, at this time last year, everyone, everyone that was talking about Xavier Booker was willing to say how raw he was. 
and, and talk about upside, but there, you know, there's got to be a process with him. I don't think raw because he can shoot and handle the ball. That's not raw to me. He's got skill. He's got skill, but he doesn't have. I don't. I don't know how to say this. He's got skill, but um, basketball IQ, court awareness. Um, you know, there's a difference between being able to hit from different spots on the floor. Yeah, that's skill. He's got all the. He's got practice. Yeah, we got to play hard. And, and he's got. You know, he's got all these. He's got great. Uh, you know, mechanics with his with his jumper and all these different things. But to go from the practice gym and to do it in a game where not everything is going to go according to the scouting report. There's a there's a, a game awareness. There's a court awareness, and there's just a, an experience factor that he doesn't have, and that's where he's raw. Look, look, look where Pierre Brooks is. He could shoot, right. you know, but the other areas of the game. And I still think if Pierre Brooks, you know, like if you train, legit, hypothetically, if he went to Western mm -hmm. or he went to, you know, Oakland or something like that, there's no doubt in my mind that he'd be one of those guys that every once in a while you'd open up, you know, look on, online for a box score. I almost said open the newspaper, but and he scores 35 or 40 points. He's just, he's got that kind of like, you know, he has the ability to fill it up like that. But there's a difference between being able to play basketball and being able to play in this in this format at this level. To and play winning basketball as part of a cog, to, as part of a right. piece, yeah. And that's what Booker's got to learn next year. And if Hall is back and be a, it could be a part of it, that'll help. Um, cause any, anyway, uh, hey, Big Ten tournament's going to be interesting. Michigan State, you know, they started Whitens today as a, as a senior day. He's not in the playing group, obviously, but, you know, early on in that game, they'd played nine guys. He was one of them. Cooper was not one of them. But Michigan State's getting that transition going. You mentioned the blitz counter break. Uh, you know, they got Matty Sissoko deep running the middle. I, I, I've got bad memory these days, but I couldn't remember them throwing to him deep down the middle. I've been looking for it all year. He got fouled, hit a couple free throws. But that's a part of the blitz counter break that you need, and they haven't had that. They've had that with big men in the past, and it's a, an important component to get the opposing big man back there and, uh, and getting the wing defenders to come in and honor that because that opens up the wing shooting from Walker and Akins. Michigan State has gotten some wing shooter shooting from Walker and Akins, which opened up Maddie today. But they've been working on the blitz counter break. You know, they, they, were, they had their injuries and they had other problems all year. It's something they work on for 25 years. They've always had it in the part of the, part of the program. Today we saw more glimpses of it. Not only that play, but they also got a couple three-pointers. Blitz counter break one time. Hogard took it to the rack. Blitz counter break one time. Tyson Walker got a little 14-footer blitz counter break. When, when Ohio State happened to score, Michigan State was coming right back at him and getting some of those demoralizing points. Not only are they points, but uh, it... Yeah, they take a little something out of the opponent, and it makes them run back. Those are, you know, it's March that that's behind schedule, but they're still working on it. It's still baby steps. Today we saw some post entry passes into Maddie at the high post, kick it back out, made a three pointer. I can't remember the last. I, I can't remember when that's happened. It's been a long time. Baby steps, baby steps. They're still working to get back to the blueprint, and and they 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 could still make drastic improvement in the next ten days. You know, you mentioned Xavier earlier this year, and they're one of my favorite teams. To, to watch, but you know, they're a team that's battled injuries in the late in the season, you know, and there's a lot of other teams that are kind of like, kind of like stumbling going into March. You know, Baylor has lost three straight, you know, there's Tennessee, other, Tennessee, good, another good, good example in Michigan State, Purdue, Rutgers, right. and, and, you know, Rutgers stumble started with the injury to uh, Magma Watt, or, uh, and uh, they haven't been the same since, you know, he's, I mean, no one really knows who he is. I was at a Rutgers fan, but he's a pretty good defensive player. And everything's kind of, you know, one piece taken away that can kind of can kind of hurt you. Michigan State, meanwhile, is kind of getting everything going, uh, you know, chemistry-wise, on-court chemistry-wise, and uh, and that's what we've been seeing. It's not it's not that these guys are all of a sudden uh, becoming better shooters. They're getting a better feel for each other. And mm -hmm. the ball is getting to where each of these guys is. is in a good position to score, and that's the key. Because they haven't played a lot together, all healthy at the same time. So Michigan State's coming on strong behind, the, under the radar, above the radar. Kentucky's getting better. North Carolina's getting better. We'll see what that means. It's March. Michigan State's in the middle of it, even though people aren't really talking about it much. But those of you that know basketball know that some of those sparks are there. Izzo, he knows basketball. He knows it's possible. A lot of it will be determined by matchups. But that Michigan State's not a matchup that you want if you're supposed to beat them and, you, and they're, they're a seven seed in your bracket. That's not that's no fun. Michigan State's getting better and uh, they're dangerous. Anything else, Paul? We've been talking a long time. We appreciate you guys sticking with us and watching us all season. Last time here from the Breslin Center for this year. Paul Conardike, Jim Copper, we've been watching the VCAS.